I ain't even gonna lie, the Doom joint was so easy to do. Mm. Like when when we when we started speaking to him, we were like, you know, it's Doom in it. You don't even know if you're gonna get the verse in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because um, he's so like sought after, but yet he's, you know, I would imagine back for for his time, at, especially in the thick of it, the moon and the stars had to align. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know what I think for this project that we've done? The moon and the stars aligned for us so many times, and it was just like it's almost like uh, sometimes yeah. Yeah, I got a bit too lucky <laughs> in it. But then also you kind of think, oh well, maybe you know we believe in our skills. We know we're nice. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like you can't you can't just do a record with with these people that we got records with. Do you know mm. what I mean? You can't. It, it's not. It's not like you can't just be any guy and, and like some some people might think, oh, you, know, you pay the right money. So it's, it ain't that. No, it's like no, you've got to no. be nice to start with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Killer Keller official .com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Fucking get into it now. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, wanna be. Big ah. shout out to NoPolandRecords.com, GraffitiKings.co.uk, and of course, StrangeStation.co.uk. Hold tight, everyone that's got the Kellervision app. Listen, I say this all the time, every week, every week, twice a week we do this. Uh, Kellervision is your source for the music, you know, sport and art, street culture, and more. Free download, iPhone, Android, you know what it is. We have a bit of a don inside the building. <laughs> We're all aboard, the neighbours have been warned, he's inside the fucking building. Um, as they should be. <laughs> as they should be, by default. Um, a gentleman that has, has casually managed his way um, through American producers, right the way through to Jake. J Electronica, MF Doom. I mean, we're going to get into some pretty heavy shit here. White Girl Wasted is the new project. My guy, Sonny Jim, inside the place. How are, how are we, sir? I'm good, bro. I'm good. You? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. I can't lie, we've had a good chat. Yeah, Stuck. This, this would have been, these wouldn't have been poured for any other reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more of a case of what don't we talk about. <laughs> no, we can talk about whatever. <laughs> Let's get into the subject of uh, domestic life and music. Let's just jump straight into okay. the deep end. Because we're kind of a, we're chatting about it before, yeah. and it's like, is this kind of DIY aesthetic to the things we do? And you and me have come up through the same ranks of UK hip hop. At a time now where technology is all completely in your hands, it's like it's actually hard to stop yourself from yeah, working, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's yeah. I mean, in that sense, like you say, stop yourself from working. The amount of beats that I get sent, I really? mean, there's so much good shit. Really? That's why I work so much sometimes because it's just like, oh, just. It ain't like back in the day. Back in the day, I used to be begging producers for a beat CD. I used to get the CD in the post <laughs> before I went to work. I'd be rinsing these beats like, oh, right, for you real. know what I mean? Now it's just like. But it's like that with everything in it, it's an influx of mm. so much. Do you know what I mean? You go to your phone and it's like all there and it's yeah. like, you know. When I say domestically, um, you've got a studio in your house? Got a studio. Just got flooded yesterday. Stop it. Yeah. It's all right though. Everything was... Well, I walked into water about that big, but like... Luckily, the... How did yeah. you get... How, how, what was it? Was it a plumbing? It was a, yeah, it was a plumbing situation. A pipe came loose. Some shit burst. It actually happened about... Three months ago when I was in the studio, about four in the morning, but someone was there who knew plumbing and he popped it back in and I thought everything was fine and dandy. Uh, uh, uh. But he probably didn't pop it in properly, in it. Because he knew the back of his mind. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back here in a few months. The weather forecast is saying it's going to fucking dry yeah. and rain. But yeah, i got a studio at the crib, yeah. 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 I, yeah I've, I kind of, I've always had my own studio for probably the last 10 years or so. When I moved to London, I didn't have a studio and that really, like, messed my flow up in it. But, yeah. but... Uh, for the last four four years, I built a studio over where I am. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've got to have a studio, bro. The way I work, you know, I can't be yeah. booking out hours and then. Can you imagine that? Like back in the day, people used to actually have to do that. Yeah. And actually be prepared and have yeah. you know, a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's pressure and also like sometimes the day ain't the day, in it. Like you know, you sound like this one day and tomorrow you sound yeah. completely different. In it. So mm. it's like, yeah. You still got to pay for the. Fucking 120 quid, thank you very much for the yeah. scene afterwards. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so in terms of beats, I mean, I did allude to the American uh, connectivity. Buck Wild, man, like crazy production. Yes, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people ask, out there asking questions, but I want to kind of get more into the detail of what kind of beats that you like. What are the, what are the kind of beats that in 2022 Sonny Jim kind of looks for? Do you know what? Just something with... Um, just... It's, it, if I start rhyming to it as soon as I hear it, it's on. Then I know in it. Mm. Then I know if it just like sets my mind off like that. Then I know in it. Mm. Um, what kind of beats? Eighty BPM, something, mm. em- something kind of empty. I like like black exploitation type sounds and that sort of. I know that sort, of, that sort of funk. You know what I mean? Oh, but yeah, you know, kind of loop stuff. You know, yeah, big yeah, up Farmer yeah. G. We were talking about yeah, before we came yeah, shout out to Farmer, He got yeah. those loops a lot. Yeah, me and Farmer just started a, a project as well. But, That's my guy. But yeah, me and Buckwell just started the second project actually. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because like I was gassed when we when we got up. And you know how I met Buckwell? Talk to me through my next door neighbor. What? So my next door neighbor's from New York, from Staten Island, and somehow he knows Buck and like. We were speaking and he was like, yo, you, you want me to link you up with? Because he was a fan, fan of my music already. So he was like, yo. Mad, bro. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? If someone t- told me 10 years ago, yo, you're gonna, your next door neighbor's just going to like, you know, you, you go. Eh. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you that, you know, ain't into the hip hop thing entirely, because we got different people to check out the show. Buck Wild is a seminal producer, like heightened in the 90s, like proper like New Yorkian, like kind of boot camp, beat miners, that business. It, what's he done? He's done like, he's done, he's done 50 joints, he's done the Black Rob joints, he's done like Locks joints, he's like, you know, he's digging in the, all the digging in the crate yeah. shit. Like, so, yeah. okay, so <laughs> let's get into this, right? Yeah, you want to knock that? Yeah, yeah. So what, so you are excited your what you hit them up on DMs like what's what's the feedback what's the first thing you receive what's the what's so, the feelings here so with Buckwild like so my next door neighbor just gave me his phone number he said yo ring him rang him chopped it up with him he's cool you know what he's super cool like I met a lot of people in this game and like he's one of the safe ones he's super safe like I chat to him fanboys on fleek right bro, now I chat to him all the time on WhatsApp just like he, we chop we chop it up he's yeah, just safe in it you know what I mean and it's Especially with all the egos in music and yeah. just, you know, the business we're in. Yeah. Just to find someone just normal, safe. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing, we... man. It's good when that happens, isn't it? Where you have this kind of, it becomes, it, what becomes formal, you, you strike on a creative level and then the next thing it's like you're having small talk bands. Yeah. And it's just yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best yeah. thing, isn't it? Mm-mm. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, Sorry, we are cracking. It's not drink champs, guys. It's just, it's just, just <laughs> fucking killer keller podcast. But you know, this is my dear mate here just bought through a, yeah, a nice come on, you know small bottle do. of uh, Hennessy, which um, will go down particularly well. You it was my birthday do. last week, so hold oh, tight. We'll go with that. Happy belated That's birthday, That's my excuse. Brother. Thank you very much, sir. Um, how did it all begin? Because if you go back into your archive, and we're talking about easily twenty plus years of, of solid cons- yeah, consistency. Yeah. Where where it all begin? How did it all start? Boy, um, so I remember like so rap. I got into rap music by my cousins used to go. My cousins came back from America one time when they went on holiday and they bought back like Scarface, Double X, Posse, Ghetto Boys, just a bunch of mm. bunch of rap music. And I just as soon as I heard it, I was like, yeah, this is for me. Sign me this up. Is, yeah, literally. And so we used to rap a little bit here and there, but, you know, just, you know, fuck around with kids. But I tell you when, and I told him this story the other day because I sent him a, a, a show that I was at. How I decided, boom, I'm, I'm going to do this rap thing. And like, oh, I can do it, yeah. Do you remember Skinny Man's verse on Mark B and Blade album? On the Mark B and Blade on, album, on, yeah. On the unknown album. So I knew Skinny's verse, word for word, yeah, and he used to just rap along with it, yeah, and he used to be like... Man, I could rap this for, you know what I mean? I, if you turn this off now, I, I could rap it for, so I was like, all I need to do is change the words and like, I could be a rapper in it. And that's how, that's, that's. Just like that? Just like that. I told, I told Skinny the other day, this was like, I'd never told him that story. And it was like, it was, I was like, bro, you're probably the reason that I yeah. thought, yeah, I could, and yeah, just like that. Wow. And then man started writing and, you know, but doing open mics, doing battles, just doing all, you know. Yeah. You remember back in the day, battles yeah. were like a, not what they are now. They were like a, 
a tool to go and do music in it or a yeah. tool to go and like network and network kind of get and just pocket. know people and yeah. just you know move forward in it that because there wasn't there wasn't really anything else there weren't no internet no, type no, thing no. back then in it like well, it was more interactive wasn't it it's hard to explain if you weren't there it's, it is so hard isn't it <laughs> you know what I mean? big up blade at this point because obviously yeah, the shout unknown out to blade. Come on. album I, he was actually there with Skinny when I told him the story. Oh my! God. That's that. Yeah, that's what it was. I was I was supporting Rome Streets, and um, gotcha. they both came to the oh, show. This is recently, yeah, it was just like last. Yeah, oh, couple I thought of, this was like in the no, a co- couple months ago, bro. That's so sick. it's been like you know, this is like twenty years on, and they were both in the same room. It was hit them two and Fly Hooligan was there, and um, I was like, yo, do you know what? I need to tell you two this story. The fact that you two are here and you two are the reason. But yeah, it was it was not it was, yeah. Wow, that's a beautiful. That's extremely poetic, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. it when serendipity kicks in and yeah, all the reasons you were doing it in the first place suddenly your heads on with yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't know until you get to a certain point in it why yeah. why these things happen or why. These... Do you think that's timing? Do you think that's a time frame? Because a lot of people and I don't say okay, we didn't, but we know people that would have stopped at the first hurdle of war or. Had you know other life commitments, which is totally yeah. fair enough. Well, the thing is, like, the everything, not just not just this, but I think every journey, and you take wins and losses in it. Mm. And some people take L's and L's and L's, and they're like, "Fuck this," mm. you know mm. what I mean? They're like, "I'm, I'm not." Do you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. you got to take bare L's to take a win in it. Yeah, it's true. So like, there's that, and then there is like how you say, just just life shit in it, mm. like life circumstances, you mm. know. They'll, yeah, they'll they just they sometimes play a part, and sometimes it's more important to you know uh, deal with real life shit than deal with what you want to do or become in it. So yeah, it's, it's like it's true. You have to deal with it in your. Yeah, you're right. I I, I get the impression though that you're the kind of character because because you're an enthusiast of the scene and the industry. I would imagine you take a loss as a productive. Um, I do now. Yeah. I do now. Now that I now that I know the value of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But when I was coming up and like I was um, and things weren't working out, it was frustrating, isn't it? Give me an example of, of where you genuinely thought this isn't working out. Bro, I'll tell you the truth, yeah. So when uh, I, I dropped an album in 2016 and um, I'd said to myself, if this album don't go well, that's me done. Mm. I'm going to go and do some other shit. And the album went really well. So I put a battery in my back and I went, oh, okay, like, you know. Mm. So it, it done way better than I even thought it was going to do. And uh, But in 2016, if that album hadn't done well, I wouldn't have had all these, all these, all these records I got now. And I got bare shit in the, in like, in the, I got in the albums in the chamber, like. What? I, I mean, yeah, I got albums and albums in the chamber, finished shit. That's Stop like, it. I could, bro, I could die tomorrow and be good for five years. Put on some print shit. I mean, yeah, like literally, I could, but um, yeah, yeah. I went when when I was coming up, it was like t- taking bare L's and seeing, and also seeing a lot of other people, and trying not to, like, I don't like the trait of like jealousy or envy, but you know when you're seeing other people and you know who they are and what what their art is, and then you know your art, and you're thinking, man, how come they're on and I'm not in it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's hard not to do that. Yes, yeah. And it's it's a it's a, like you say it's a human trait. Yeah. It may not be the most you know. It's a horrible trait, but it's a human trait, isn't it? And like when I was yeah. when I was doing it, I didn't I didn't I felt dirty being jealous of anyone. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that was that was a time when when I was like, well, is it for me? Is it not for me? Do you know what I mean? Well, as you were about to close that door, there was there there could only be that feeling of. Um, not failure, but that just that feeling of I don't really want to do this. It's like fucking dying early. I think it's a feeling to. of failure, you know, especially like when when you're giving it the Barry and the big talk, and then everyone sees that you didn't do what mm. you said you were gonna do, or do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like it's one gonna, little <laughs> gonna fly. Um, yeah, I think it is a slight feeling of failure in it, and like egg on your face in it. I find that interesting because I, it shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. And and in many respects, like those are the that extra bit of energy that you need to see you through. You, yeah, you've almost got to have that thing to you know you've got to have a you've got to have a um, a uh, a target. Yeah, and if that target is a, a level of um, 
envy or you know jealousy towards something or somebody or or a scenario yeah you know, like if it gets you through it yeah yeah I don't know. i'm so, i'm always making sense of it cuz as i got older i've lost all of that and then i yeah me think, too yeah you know i mean i'm like what is it now then what th is the thing that drives you i don't know what's he, what's yours you reckon oh that's an interesting question what drives me bro do you know i think i i I, th I think one thing that I, uh, I I want more validation. I want more validation from the people that like I um, I look up to in it, yeah. and so until I get that, I don't think I'll be happy, and I don't think that you ever really get that. You don't. So it's cool as long as I'm searching for that, and I'm not <laughs> going to get it. I'm just going to carry on going, but um, but also I think that music for me maybe is slightly um, therapeutic as well. Mm. So like, I'd I'd be doing this if I weren't getting paid or if I weren't a professional. Mm. I'd still be doing this. Mm. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. I, do I can't. Know what my, my mind can't turn off in it. Mm. I'll be waking up four in the morning and I got shit. Mm. God, I need to write down. Mm. You know what I mean? Like in a hangover stupor, you're saying I'm not doing this shit. Anymore. I'm not doing. <laughs> I'm on music. But then all of a sudden you hear a tune and you just yeah. Like, and then yeah. all of a sudden the cogs start moving again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit is yeah. so annoying. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Truth. I mean, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but I also question that. Like, I'm like, yo, what's up with people? How come the? You know, music isn't just the soundtrack for your TikTok. It's like, yo, music is everything. Like, what doesn't make you do that? You know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah, doesn't it's make true. you cogs go. It's true, it's true. Especially like, you know, you you'll just be like just living life, you'll get ideas, innit? Mm. Living life, watching a movie, going to a restaurant, whatever, just having a conversation with someone, innit? Simple words. So many it's like so many um I tell you what, in the studio now, because I have so many people come through all the time, a lot of the time is not even spent making music. Obviously, it's sitting around having a drink and whatnot and having a session, but... Don't know what you just, mean. Uh, no, nah, not really. <laughs> but um, just talking, just talking and, like, picking up gems in it and going, mm. oh, OK, and, you know, learning things in it. I think that's that for... Just sitting with the right people doing that mm. is just as important as going, all right, cool, we've got to record, where's the beat, let's go, do you know what I mean? It's like... Dude, this opens up such a conversation in my head because I go through it all the time and it's like... It, there's the commodity of your art and getting paid and there's the business side of it. But there's these things that you conversate with people that are almost part of your quote-unquote, your toolbox. Yeah. And when you have those <coughs> conversations, you almost you suddenly put yourself in the right place at the right time and suddenly a piece of the puzzle just fitted yeah. into play. Now yeah. I know how that's done. Yeah. That yeah, shit's yeah, yeah. priceless. Yeah, yeah. There's some stuff that I'm doing just on this White Girl Wasted campaign now and I'm like... Shit! Why didn't I have that in place before? I thought I knew every. Like I thought I knew more. Like, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's and it's all a process of learning in it. And as mm. long as like, as long as you don't kick yourself too much when mm. you think, oh fuck, why didn't I know that? Mm. It's all good in it. Yeah, and it's part of the course. And just going back to what we were saying, it's like with a with a life of mini lives that you've had as a career. A lot of people would have just like bowed out on the first success. They would have bowed out on the, you know, at the first weak spot, yeah. kink in their armor. You know, yeah. you have to go through that to suddenly find the value in these tools yeah. that we find, yeah. isn't it? It's very true, man. So originally from Birmingham. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Born and bred. Yeah. yeah. When did you come uh, over to London? I've been here for like seven years now. Yeah. Uh, I was. Yeah. I'm, I'm over in West. I was in Bush for a bit. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting experience. But I kind of find like now with what I'm doing, I have to be here in it. Mm. Yeah, like you know, it's, it's a lot of like you know when people, a lot of like touring artists or whatever that you know I'm working with or whatever they they come to London and they always come and see me and mm. we always get work done and mm. like everyone comes to the studio, and like I'm mad busy now in it. If mm. I was in Brum like this, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't be as busy in it, yeah. or I just wouldn't. So yeah, it's a it's a double edged sword, isn't it? We were talking earlier, but yeah, it's yeah. I love it and I hate it, isn't it? We were we were, <laughs> we were referring to Tizer's podcast where he 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 pointed out that the city doesn't need us. We, you know, yeah. the city don't need any of us. You know, it keeps on moving, keeps on re. re it's so true, but so cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's so cold, true, but so cold, man. What was it like when first moving to London? Because it is a cold fucking place. Um, yeah, do you know what? It was so what's what's kinda of ironic, um when I moved to London, my boy the Purist, who I'd done the White Girl Wasted album with. Nice. He moved to London at the same sort of time. So where's he from? 
He's from. He's actually from Bognor. But he's big, based, up Bog, big up South South yeah. of England crew. <laughs> He's from Bognor, but he's based in Brighton. Big up. Um, so, yeah, so it's, so we was, that's when we kind of started working on the project. So it kind of gave me a focus to do something in it. And, mm. like, so as soon as I got here, I started working on the, the record. And, you know, we've been uh, we've been kind of working on it until up until, like, last year or something. What's the premise of it? What's the, I mean, the concepts, you know, the name alone could send concepts wild. What's the, what's the, what's the backbone of it? What's the, what's the vibe? Fun. We kid. Literally fun, because um, that's what we was doing. When we was making it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We he just got to London. I just got to London, didn't it? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We was wilding. Honey you know what I mean? Period. Yeah. So, so yeah, just a lot of fun, bro. Um, and like the set, like there's only eight songs I think on the album. We must have worked for like three, four years, and a lot of it was just sitting, just. Discussing, just going, oh, what, do you, what just ideas, isn't it? Yeah, that's like when we sat down to make the record, or when we just started working together, we didn't go, oh, we need Doom, J Electronica, mm. blah blah blah. Do you know what I mean? These ideas came from talking and like, just yeah, just conversating with people, just having different people in the studio, and just building links and whatever. And you know, these ideas came slowly, and you know, the name and the artwork and everything, it was just. Nothing was, oh, we need to do this. Mm. It was just from sitting and just doing it and going, ah, oh, that's, that's, that's how, it, you know, that's how a lot of these records came about, isn't it? Did a lot of the project, because you mentioned MF Doom, rest in peace. Yeah, like, oh, rest in peace. Were you, did you have the, the vocals of his, because you said it was over the course of eight years, like that's a long yeah, period. Yeah, it's probably been over the course, probably about five years, I reckon. Um... I ain't even gonna lie. The Doom joint was so easy to do. Mm. Like when when we when we started speaking to him, we were like, you know, it's Doom in it. You don't even know if you're gonna get the verse in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because um, he's so like sought after, but yet he's, you know, I would imagine back for for his time, it, it, especially in the thick of it, the moon and the stars had to align. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know what I think for this project that we've done? The moon and the stars aligned for us so many times, and it was just like it's almost like uh, sometimes yeah. Yeah, I got a bit too lucky <laughs> in it. But then also you kind of think, oh well, maybe you know we believe in our skills. We know we're nice. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like you can't you can't just do a record with with these people that we got records with. Do you know mm. what I mean? You can't. It, it's not. It's not like you can't just be any guy. And, and like some some people might think, oh, you, know, you pay the right money. So it's, it ain't that. No, it's like no, you've got to no. be nice to start with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. But like with the Doom thing, we literally we sent it in, we got it back in, I don't know, it might have been a couple of days. Stop it. We listen, we paid we we paid him for a sixteen. He come back with like a twenty four bar verse. Oh god, I love So you 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 that. you'd like I love me, him even more. Me, me, <laughs> yeah, I mean he's one of you know, I think he's it was crazy like when he passed. Ha- how many people were like you saw how he was a, so many people's favorite mm. you know what i mean like and so many different type of people as well in mm. it like all across the, the, mm. the rap rap scope do you know what i mean big time. and outside them big up romej ranganathan and c pile and crap good boys they all fucking love yeah 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 Yo, if you like if you like rap music you know you, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but, and uh, you know just to keep the flowers on the table here you are the mc's mc Without question. Appreciate that. Thank you, bro. Uh, there's there's a few in the UK right now doing right now. I put Hooli in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Big Do you up, know what I mean? yeah. Big up Hooli. Uh, but yeah, I would say. Do you know what? I, th- MC's I, MC. I, 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 I think I always wanted to be that. Hmm. Yeah, I always wanted to be that. Um, that's yeah, yeah. That was that was one of the hmm. not not like you know I was I was thinking about that, but you know I always. I always be- before before the rest of the world say, "Oh, yo, this guy's nice." I want, you know, the good rappers to go out. Mm-hmm. You know, and also you want my flowers are important to me. Yeah. I want them. Do you know what I mean? Some people don't what, care. But going back to what you're saying though, because you're you're constantly in um, finesse mode with knowing that in the back of your mind, your bigger your bigger aspirations are to work in accordance to what your peers think. Yeah. And that's that's a real hard balance, isn't it? Because me, me saying that to you, which yeah. is pretty much fact. I mean, yeah. and I'm sure you've been told it before. It it still it probably doesn't even settle, does it? You still don't. No. Like, oh, I ain't fucking finished yet. No, nah, bro. I, honestly, I feel like I'm just getting started. Mm-hmm. 
I really feel like I'm just getting started. I it was, feels like it is. Yeah, mm. yeah. Man's been here for 20 years, but I feel like now we're just getting started because now people are cottoning on. Mm. You know, before I had, you know, a, a small fan base and, you know, I was able to make a living out of, you know, putting records out. But now, mm. you know, now there's been opportunities presented to me. And also, do you know what? When I had opportunities presented to me before, I fucked a lot of them up because... I was I was young and I didn't care as much. I didn't really, you know, I just didn't. I, it was just whatever in it, like you mm. know, I wasn't some shit. But now it's like, nah, this is this this. I tell you what it was before when I was young. It was like I never th really thought that rap music would earn me a decent living and and I could just do this for real. Do you know what I mean? I never thought I could do it for real. I always knew your man's got skills, whatever, but mm. because remember there were no infrastructure for us back in the day. Yeah, that's right. So I didn't really think that this this would happen. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know the internet was going to go like this or the mm. vinyl market was going to go mm. like this or I was going to link up with these producers and mm. do these out. So I was like, so I, I think unconsciously or consciously I'd, I, I fucked up a lot of opportunities now or that back then. But now when I get these opportunities, it's like, nah, I'm grabbing that shit by the fucking throat. Do you know what I mean? And like... I'm 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 rinsing it for what it is now, mm. and just like, uh, you know, I'm turning up. Before yeah, you I was like, as well. Yeah, I mean, it's the time in it. Yeah, I've got and to... I don't think you could have done anything more than what you had done to get to the point where you were. Like, if someone had offered you something of a silly amount of money for a record deal, you wouldn't be here now anyway. No, nah. um, arguably, like you may have just splashed the money, oh, got bankrupt, I, bro. I, I, I would have definitely fucked it up. <laughs> I, 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 I fucked it up and I had to reset really quickly. So yeah, I listened yeah, to yeah. I feel you. Yeah. So I mean, you know, they say that you know things happen. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in fate like that. I don't know, but they say things happen for a reason and timing is everything or whatever. But yeah, I feel like now, like with my mindset and everything, I'm able to able to capitalize on on these opportunities. Mm. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people that that are fans of yours. Um, this is why I asked this for a further deeper analysis is because you came from an era and your your versatility as an MC is vast because when you hear you in the beginning, it's a very different yeah. proposition to yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. How did that course, how did that change course like that? What was the, what was the, because things, obviously the, the gutter rap era, the, you know, the, the Griselda era, this, this is, it's that time now. Yeah. Um, and it will be held in history as that. You were kind of, it's, just, it's almost like you, it, you just patterned up and it was just something just happened. You, you know, I think um, what happened was uh, probably like, you know, I think there was a point where music or where where rap kind of toned, toned down a bit. Do you know what I mean? I think, you know, someone like Rock Marcy is, you know, mm -hmm. probably, he's probably one of the forefathers of of, of 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 that change but like i think when i started to hear that shit i was like do you know what this sounds much cooler than the shit i'm doing and i want to sound cool or i want to sound cooler than i sound mm -hmm. now so that would have been that would have that would have definitely had a, a reflection on it um but also like i didn't really uh i didn't really know that my voice was an instrument when i was rapping Ooh. back in the day oh because we was on our battle shit we was mm. just like out to kill, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. we weren't, and I'm not musically trained. I didn't do no music in school or no, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I didn't know anything like that. I just knew what I'd learned going to studios and listening. But so I didn't know my voice was an instrument. So I was just out there, rah, 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just trying to, yeah. just trying to kill in it. And like when I learned that, yo, I need to sit with, with the track. It's not, it's not even just always just about your voice. It's about the song in it. Mm. And it's like, and that I think made my style change a little bit, you know. Mm. <coughs> That's beautiful, man. Like, because that rap battle era was some <coughs> fucking else, man. Like, you can have an urgency to your bars, like, but like, but to be cool about it, yeah. There's some that's some aged <laughs> <laughs> grown man shit. Yeah, for you know, real. That's the that's the you know cow fable. <coughs> We're gonna go down the down the bottom of that field and fuck some female <laughs> cows, and the bull turns around to the young cow and goes, "No, we're gonna walk down there." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? I'm gonna show you how it's done. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, exactly. It's just, <coughs> it's one of those scenarios. Do you ever think to yourself, "Yo, I, I could you go back? Could you go back to 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 battle Sunny Jim? Like, would you go back there?" 
I mean, every now and again, when I see um, when I see uh, a battle here or there, I'm like, shit. You get a taste you know. for it. I do, I do. Do you? I do, yeah, I do oh, for oh, sure. Oh. And I sometimes think, oh, do you know what? <clears throat> Fuck it, I should just do one just just to do it. Just it? to cut your just, chops a bit. Yeah, and just to flex. But then, like, when you start thinking about it, it's like, okay. I tell you what what puts me off it is that, you know, like, you know, like when you watch, you know, like how you get all these football matches and, like, you'll watch a match of the day and then, like, you'll see the results, whatever, and then that, that match has gone in the past. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? You don't care about that, mm. Unless it was like super special, or it was just mm-hmm. that's done in it, mm. whatever. And I feel like that's what it is with these battles in it. They don't, they don't. They never hold um, historical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some some do, but only a handful out of out of thousands. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel like for the for all the effort that it's, it's uh, all the effort that you need to put in to do it. Because if I did it, I'd want to like go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like you know, <clears throat> what three three four minutes. Per round, that's a lot of bars, a lot of... And then it's like, if I'm getting all these bars, mm. maybe I should use them for my songs. And then also, like, how am I going to pick an opponent? I need to pick an opponent of mm. someone that I fucking hate. Or that, a or, lot, or, innit? Or that I want to rinse for some reason. And at this point, there ain't no one... I don't I don't, I'm not, I don't hate anyone, no. so it's like... <laughs> Just it, trying to get paid, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get my fucking career moving. I tell you what, in a, in a way... And I don't, I don't want this to happen. I don't want to like, but sometimes I think, oh, I wish someone would call me out. Comment below. <laughs> I, I, I wish someone would call me out, and then I'd have a reason to. Really? But it's like, nah. I mean, you know, yeah, that, yeah, you know, I, yeah, I still, yeah. Dude, I'm the same with beatboxing. It's like, yeah, you know I mean, I'm not in a battle. I'm in a better. This is the, this yeah. is the time, man. Like, yeah. fucking forty four. What do you want from me, fucking yeah. blood? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just like, it's yeah, the, the, the battle shit's a lot, and it's like, it's not what I do, and it's no. like, you know. But you know, you watch it every now and again. I tell you what it is. I watch it. and I go, man, he's like shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes me go, oh, I, I should do one. But no, nah, it's not something that I'm gonna really. Oh, your bars are crazy, man. <laughs> Even back in the day, your bars were crazy. <laughs> Thank you, bro. So good, so good. Um, let's get back to the lyrics of now. What's your What's your biggest? What are the influences that yield like the kind of tracks that you're putting out right now? You know what? Did no word of a lie. I just don't listen to much music at the moment. Really? No. Nah. What? Because you're in studio mode? No, nah, I just, I just don't. I just, I haven't listened to music like that really for maybe three, four years. Really? No. Nah. I mean, it's not like oh, I don't listen to no music. But if I listen to music, it probably won't even be rap music. Be like, I can imagine it's like some black exploitation shit. No, nah, it's probably just like... 90s rave, isn't it? It's, nah, probably just some soul shit, you know what I mean? But mostly, I'll tell you the music I listen to. I just listen to whatever my girl's playing. You know What's what your I mean? girl play? She likes fucking... Um, she likes... Uh, what does she like fucking? What's, 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 what's that guy? Black, Six Lack, you know the... Yeah, that, yeah. So, I don't know how you say his name, yeah. but... She listened to him, like, you know, that sort of shit. I don't know, maybe a bit of Chris Brown, Drake, just that sort of, like, okay. you know what I mean? That she MTV bit, bass era. She likes, yeah, she likes yeah. a bit of EDM, whatever. But, you know, whatever she's playing, mm. that's what I'm listening to, in it? So yeah. it's not like... And then I'm in the studio every day, so I'm, you know, music's around me all day, yeah. every day. Um, but if I get a chance to just listen to something, I'm just playing beats. Mm. I'm just playing beats people are sending me and just getting ideas, mm. in it? Um... But yeah, I, yeah, there's, there's, I don't like, I try, I try, I don't want to be a hater or I try not to be like, but when I listen to stuff, I'm just like, you know, don't, I find the albums as a whole, they ain't that good anymore. Just like, I like this, I like, I might, I got Spotify, I might go on my Spotify and go, oh, this person's got a new album out, I'll flip through and be like, okay, I like these two, three songs, but then I just never go back to it. Yeah, why is that? What was the culture in that? I don't know, man. And I don't, I don't like doing it either because, I don't want people to do that to my shit. Do you know what I mean? Like when the new Kendrick album came out, mm. Kendrick's a great rapper. Mm. I used, to, I mean, he's a great artist, whatever. I used to listen to when his first few albums came out. You know, I know them quite well. But I listened to a few of the songs that I like. I really love the Kodak Black song. Mm. But 
I, I just ain't gone back to it and it's just, you know what I mean? I, I, I drown in Kendrick albums. I just don't yeah. know. What, I, can't, I can't swim it. It's like, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the, too rich. And... Yeah, I think where, when I started to get put off was the, the Butterfly joint. Mm. And it was just like, you know, this is really good music, but it's also a chore to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to have, have your headphones on with a, with a theosaurus and a yeah. bit of study to you. <laughs> you can't yeah, get drunk to yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's not really what I want in... The, yeah. my music as a leisure thing do you know what I mean so leisure, yeah. yeah so I just um, I don't think much is uh, inspiring the type of music I make mm. I think I know what I know I know how I want to sound and the beats that I get sent they're what I get sent mm. and that's kind of what what dictates the mm. the way we're going right now isn't it? But, but when you get like I don't know like, Jay Electronica I've got a huge affliction for he's fucking great yeah of course he sends you over something yeah and Yo, know, that must just be like a breath of fresh air. You just be like, not only are you, you know, are you excited the fact that you're working with a guy, but it must yeah. be added value to what could be just like a, a regular, you know, plain sailing track yeah. with no influences from other music. Yeah. And all of a sudden he comes in and just yeah, yeah, yeah. steamrolls yeah. through, carpet cuts the fucking yeah, light out of it. Yeah. That must be an amazing moment. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. It was crazy, you know, like... When I got the Doom verse back and when I got the J Electronica verse back, I remember when I got the Doom verse back, he sent it, I think, like on a Monday morning or something. And I didn't even want to open the attachment because I didn't want to... I'd spoil it. I, I, yeah. <laughs> even when I got the Primo beat, Primo kept hitting me up. Have you listened yet? Have you listened yet? I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to. But I, 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 you know... You know yeah, yeah, hold on. Is this a casual Primo drop? Did you just fucking... Is this madness or what? We got we got Primo on the White Go Wasted joint. Yo, I'm just not down. I'm not down with this. I'm not down with this. So I, I said at the start of this, I'm glad I didn't get no press release. Now I'm starting to think to myself, motherfucker, it's like what the fuck? Primo. Sorry, bro. I thought you. Uh, yeah, this is fucking yeah. genius. I thought, uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't like a sly yeah. little. Yo, yo, no, no, that's that's a name drop I could pick up later. Yeah, trust me. yeah, that is um, Fuego. What's yeah. the, okay, 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 okay? Because I get this with music videos, right? The moment you you're looking at the thing landed on your on your desk and you're like. Oh, I love it so much, I don't want to open it. Uh, it's like that, isn't it? Well, well for me, it was like, I tell, no, I'll tell you what it is for me. It's like, I don't want to get disappointed because mm. you know you've got such high, you know. So when, when when we got the J-verse, we were like, you know, in my mind, I want to exhibit C. I mean, yeah, exhibit yeah, yeah. C is exhibit C. It's one of one, isn't it? Yeah. But in your mind, you're like, you know, you you want to fucking exhibit C, yeah, 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 yeah. And like... You know, with with Doom, like, I want to rhymes like dimes. Yeah. So I was like, shit, I don't even want to open this up just in case it fucks up my day. Yeah, you're going to fuck up my day. You're going to fuck up my week. You're going to fuck up my day. In fact, I'm going to check all the way <laughs> my fucking records of DJ Premier. You're going to be fucking gutted. But, um, but yeah, like, so when, when when we got the Doom verse, I remember uh, I remember Purist kept hitting me up and he was like, yo, you ain't checked it yet. You ain't checked it yet. I was like, is it good? He's like, yo, this shit's fire. We got one. And I was like, okay. So then, you know, I checked it. We were supposed to go to the studio that day. We just end up like buying a bunch of champagne and just celebrating a win, man. And just like going, yo, we got a fucking Doom verse, man. Do you know Can what I mean? Can we just have a fucking drink we were just, this? We were just like, yo, we got a fucking Doom verse, bro. Fucking flowers all over the place. The whole floor's littered with rose petals, man. <laughs> fucking sunny gym in the fucking building. Yeah, so like, we were just so gassed in it. And then like... So the one thing with, with Purist is he, he, when we were making the record, he'd say to me, who, who, if you can get someone, would you get to do this or would you get to do that, blah, blah, blah. Like, let's just work from the top down. Mm. And I didn't really thought about it like that. Mm. And, you know, like even when, so he was quite instrumental in um, putting out or helping me with, with the last final stages of my Muddy My Malbec project which he put out on dope in 2016 that was the one i was saying to you where uh, uh, if yeah. i didn't if it didn't sell and we then we was done do you know what i mean so and like i remember one time we were doing the press photos and he was like if you could just pick anyone to do your press photos who would you pick and let's just work down from there in it i was like oh do you know what i really really like this guy alexander richter he's got like i'm a big fan of his photos and he's shot everyone you know prodigy primo royce bronson whoever yeah and i was like i really fuck with his photos and he was like, ah, oh, it's funny you say that. He just started following me on Twitter a couple of days ago. Let me hit what? him up. What? Hit him up. And he was like, yo, I know about you. He's like, yeah, come, let's do it. And, you know, we flew out to New York and done the press photos with him. Um, but it was just like, the re I say that to say this, because when he was saying, oh, who do you want to get on this feature? Because when I'd done the verse for that Doom song, mm. 
Here's a story for you. So when I done the verse for the Doom song, I didn't know Doom or J Electronica were going to get on it. We hadn't even spoke about Doom. Doom's name hadn't even come up. So when I started working with Purist, because like, so Purist is a guy where, you know, you you hear his um you hear his beats and you very rarely hear like he's a sample guy, but you very rarely hear mm. him sample something that someone else has sampled. Like he'll go to physically the corners of the earth to go dig, and dig. like dig. Do you know what I mean? Just to make sure he's got shit that you ain't got. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like when we first started linking up. We was working and I'm used to going to, you know, people's studios and going, oh, I need that beat, that beat, that beat. Put them on a drive for me when I leave and then go. And I've, mm. you know, you know, and I'm, but he was like, no, 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 I you can't take no beats home with you, but you can come back to the studio tomorrow if you want. I'm like, uh-huh. can't take no beats home? Oh, okay. Because, uh-huh. because, you know, like, you know, he, <laughs> like pre- that, he's huh? precious about the samples, isn't it? Uh-huh. And so I, so that, that joint that Doom was on, I had it. When I left the studio, I just had it in my head. I knew what it sounded like. And I just wrote to it with the beat on loop in my head. No, that's good. I didn't even have the beat. So then I came back, I think the next day or the day after, and he was like, oh, you got something? And I was like, I got something. Turn the mic on. Boom. I swear, I kid you not, yeah, it was the first take, one take. In his, no no booth, no shield, no nothing. We just, as was it? Yeah, some I don't want to say what mic it was, but it was just whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought that I was just doing a little rough in it, but that uh, that that you know that came out like that, and then and he was like, "Oh, who who do you want to get on it?" You know what I mean? It's like, you know, yeah. who we could, let, let's let's try and holler at Doom in it because I already knew a couple of people who'd worked with him and who who knew him and who'd booked him and blah blah blah. And um, shout out to my boy Ivan. Um, he's the oh, one who, to, he's the one who got copy the connect. But yeah. Um. Yeah, it was it. Yeah, and then with the, then with the J thing, like because we had Doom as leverage, mm. and like we ended up hitting up J and it's and a no brainer. Like, he was like history. J, he was like Doom's my guy. I'm you yeah. know safe and like. But we yeah yeah we 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 didn't know we was gonna get them two on it when when we made it. It was just like you Crazy. know yeah yeah. Yeah, because yeah, like you don't get a Jay Elect verse. No, no, no. You know, you know what, you know what, what, what made me gassed. I remember reading a Royce interview saying him and Primo were waiting like two years for that J verse, and they thought they weren't because you know they got mm-hmm. thing on, and they thought they weren't going to get it, and they were ready to wrap up the record and like send it in, mm-hmm. and then like Royce was saying like four in the morning or something. Jay hollers at him on the phone. He's like, "Yo, I got the verse for you. Check your email now." Damn. And they were like gassed. And I was like, "Yo, we just." We got it. Like, it like... <laughs> you didn't tell Primo that, did you? <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, uh, yeah, she was crazy, man. But like, like you're saying, serendipity, shit, just you know, sometimes shit just falls into place, and you don't, mm. you don't know in it. I think that's a that, that kind of segues into why I was actually going in my head because again, there'd be people out there that are in the midst of this graft. They're working through their day-to-days, doing a day-to-day, and then coming home and trying to figure it out. I think the more critical question that I think is worth asking you, especially at this, you know, you're, you're at the magnum opus of, of the event. Mm. How? How does one apply themselves in a, on a daily to get to this position What's the? Where are the receptors? What? What? Where? Where? Where are you reaching to? What's? What's the daily process that you you've managed to? Do you, do you know? Do you know? It, do you know what? When you know when I started working really hard, things started happening mm. even more. So it's, it's just a no brainer, like you mm. know. And I'm not even firing on all cylinders. I don't wake up till one and I probably go to studio maybe three, four times a day. Mm-hmm. I mean three, four times a week. So if I was seven days a week, like I should be I should be working even harder than I'm working. Gotcha. But if you know, for people who who wanna like get to this situation or whatever, you know what it is? Now that I'm twenty years in and I'm like here, it seems like oh it was all but I forget all the sacrifices that I made. Yeah. You know, I made bare sacrifices. Mm. I, 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 you know, I was in the studio, you know, for the last, yeah, for the last 10 years, like I've been in there, do you know what I mean? And like, I miss, I miss 
birthdays, I miss this, I miss that. And I'd be like, you know, I got, I got a discount, mm. this, you know. And the one thing is that I now noticed that I did do unconsciously was I was working pretty much every day. And that don't mean going to the studio and recording every day, but just working every day, like, you know, just, just doing a little, you know mm. what? Chipping away. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> that's what it is. I've been chipping away in yeah. it. And then you, and then, and then, you chip away for 20 years and then you go, fucking hell, I built this fucking sculpture. Mm. Yeah, that, and that sculpting of what you, were, you, were, you has now become where you're at right now, that gives some muscle memory. Do you find it a lot easier to excuse that anxiety now when going, I'll give you, I'll be more specific. When you go into the studio now, are you a lot more passive does it feel like it's a lot more cookie cut easier, a lot more kind of formulaic? I'm very try. I mean, people might think that my shit is formulaic. No, I don't mean. No, 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 no. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean you. You, you were yeah. saying that, and there might be some degree of truth to that as well. I, I personally try and not do that or veer or veer away from that. One thing I did find, like, you know, when I've had like. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I got a new manager and he was in with me every day and we were just grafting, grafting, grafting. And because mm. he was taking care of all the shit that I'd been taking care of, mm. um, and, I, and I had a chance to just just do music and almost not worry about anything else. Mm. Everything else was being taken care of and I could just do music. Mm. I was, I, I would, we were looking at each other going, fucking hell, like, mm. you know, you're just in there every day, go, 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 and just like, you know, you do something so much, you just get real good at it. That's what just, I'm saying, you, yeah. You, know, you just, yeah. That's yeah. where I'm coming from. I didn't realise that would happen, though. Yeah, it? that's but. the thing, isn't it? Because after you've done, you've built your sculpture, you actually, that that um, aspect of your life's work, it means that you can almost swag a little bit more into the yeah, studio. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah, be a bit yeah, more, yeah, yeah. not so dialed in. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. So, you know, yeah, you've yeah. just had a good massage yeah, in yeah, Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and you can yeah. just like start, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's, and you know, in the last like three, four years, there's been so much less pressure as well. Mm. Because like, I know people are tuned in and listening more. And like, for me, it's like, you know, you know what? I've, Slightly deviating, but the same thing. You know, when I make projects, I find that the first five or six songs of, of the project are just... Um, the first five or six songs I end up making are... There's no pressure because, you know, we're just starting the project. Loads of ideas are going to come. I know loads of beats are going to come. There's just no pressure. I'm just like... Mm. And I love writing those mm. songs and I like Freedom. how those... Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, when you're towards the end of the album, you're like... Okay, maybe we need a song like this, or to balance this out, or just. Mm. And then there's like external aspects that you're looking at in it, and just like. Yeah. But you know, at the start, there's like nothing. It's like okay, cool. We just and I, you know, I love the feeling of just being able to, you know, clean, clean slate. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So the more critical questions. All right, uh, top five producers go. Oh, Primo. <laughs> okay. Alchemist. Ooh. Kanye West. Mm. Ooh. Mm. I know. Pete Rock. Mm. Pete Rock. That's a, I like that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I yeah. yeah. Um shit, who else, man? Maybe someone like Can be alive or dead. Maybe uh, which producers are dead? Who's some dead producers? Um <laughs> <laughs> Jay Diller. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, bloody hell! Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jay Diller. Sorry, that took me a minute as well. Yeah, yeah, Diller, Diller, yeah. Diller. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine you want a Diller beat? That'd be fucking bonkers, bro. Do you know what? Yeah. So check this. No, I'm, you haven't. No, no, I haven't got a Diller beat. I haven't got. <laughs> I haven't got a Diller beat. But one of my favorite. I'd actually, I'd say my favorite rap song is a song uh, "Nag Champa" by Common. Mm. Off his like like water for chocolate album, beautiful. And I just done a th yeah, it's you know lovely song. And I just Brilliant done a, uh, a thing for Rince for Sammy B side, and he was like pick three beats and like one of the beats that the it was actually my engineer that picked it and pulled it up just because he knows I love the song. And I rapped for like four minutes straight over that Nag really? Champa beat. I'm about to make a video for it tomorrow actually, but I rapped over it and like and I was when I was listening, I must have listened back to it a hundred times to myself, and I'm like, yo, do you know what? 
like Dilla. Mm. Yeah. All yeah. day. Yeah, Kanye, he's fucking great. He he did that thirty hours tune. Thirty hours. I know the tune. I've sa- I, I sampled the uh, the yeah. yeah I've taken a sample. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a beat I could play all fucking day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Kanye's ridiculous, and I think like you know you got to got to have him in the list because he's um he's just. You know, it's almost like maybe not so much now, but every time he was, every time he dropped, he changed the face of music in it. Like, who's who's able to like drop and just change the? You know, Dre did that with like Chronic and like yeah, you know, exactly. they drop and they change the sound of where music's going, the and, direction of it. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's that's a crazy thing to be able to do, man, because that's like that's real history in it. That's history that people are going to look back in, you know. A hundred years and go like, mm. oh, this happened here, yeah, this yeah. happened there. Like the, the stuff we do is like history, but it's just like a smaller mm. wrinkle. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's but, true, and 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 very similarly to Madonna, I guess in many yeah, respects. Yeah, the controversy outweighs the the. Um, I mean, think about the artistic integrity of a Kanye album from inception. He produces and raps and writes its own stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially some of the early stuff. It's like, yeah. that's a level of integrity yeah. to that. Yeah, that, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, and also, like, he ain't the best rapper ever, but I think he's the best rapper for his beats. Yeah, thousand percent. You know what I mean? It's the like, gel of that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, like, I, yeah, I, I, you know what? I still listen to Kanye music every, every, every now and again. Yeah, he's I like, you know... That. Um, would every minute serve you a fucking champion fucking Pete Rock tune? But yeah, yeah. He's, he's another yeah. for sure, and un, un, unsung as well a lot. Of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially Nat, like you know, his name don't come up enough now. Mm. Like, bro, Pete's instrumentals. I don't know how many bars I've written to Pete's instrumentals over the years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, because it's just you know, it's, it's gift, perfect for fucking rapping, isn't it? Yeah, like, they give something. And the thing is, there ain't even no rapping on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to say something controversial, actually. I was never a big C.L. Smooth fan. Me neither. I didn't get it. I, I think the fact that he had Pete Rock beats, <clears throat> it's almost like, and this is no disrespect to C.L. Smooth, but no one, uh, any uh, for, for that era of Pete Rock, anyone would sound good on. Mm, yeah, kind of with it. Yeah. He had a unique voice, but... Uh, at the time, rivaling someone like Guru, you know what I mean? Like, with those kind of produ- producer-rapper combos. Yeah. Oh, man, Guru yeah. was the shit, you know? like. Yeah, I mean, Guru and Primo, that was just... Seminal. Mm. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah. Alchemist and Mob Deep... Um, sorry, Prodigy from Mob Deep were very much in keeping with that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, as a, as a duo, I'll, I'll probably... Yeah, Prod- Yo, Prodigy is one of my favourite rappers ever. Can- Ever. And, and also I think he's unsung as well Big time Like you talk to the right people And they say his name But yeah. because, because You know Yeah I don't, I don't even know what. Why do you think that is I think some of it is I think some of it is because You know when you You spar with another person As a duo Yeah It's almost like It's not that It's not like the duo Throws shade in any way It's just more like Well they're a combo aren't they So Fair. It's, it's not yeah. like a Buster L-O-N-S thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's more yeah, like true. To, to have him on his own, it, it, uh, no, it, it, it's slightly sidelined from the main event. Yeah, yeah. I remember when, when he, like, you know, rest in peace to all these rappers, yeah, but like real. when he passed, I remember I was, I was at Jess studio, I was in the booth and some of my boys were sitting in the, in the vocal room and like, I was rapping a take and they were like, yo, Prodigy just died, you know? And I was like, oh, and it put such a light. That I didn't even finish the song. I was just like, man, fuck this. Who did that? <laughs> Who went and just killed your vibe in mid verse? I ain't gonna say his name because that's my that's my boy, and I want to out yeah. him like that. But anyway, no, listen. actually, no, no. You know what it was? I, I'm I'm rapping the verse, and I get a text. Oh, okay. I get a text from my boy, and then I tell okay. everyone, yo. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's okay. what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was in the studio and someone, yeah, went, yo, no, guess what? No, it's like, no, 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 no guess. <laughs> yeah, it was like my, I got it on a text, and it was me that told the rest of the room, and I was like, do you know what? I don't even want to do the rest of the song today. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna pour go. some honey out. That's exactly what we did, and you know what was beautiful? That happened, and I was like, fuck this session. We we literally went and bought a bottle of henny, went to one little spot. Got some food, just drinking. I remember they had all their windows open there, rare, rare, rare. and like we're at the restaurant. We're in, we're in uh, Forest Hill, mm. some random place, Forest Hill. You know, like you know, we're there just 
drinking, drinking, just ordering bear shots of Henny at the restaurant, yeah, and just like, just like, oh shit, just like, the fucking, the guy who owns a restaurant comes over and goes, oh, what, you, uh, it's Prodigy's dead, isn't it? Like, he, the guy, wow. we ain't talked to him about it, we're just there, just clapping, we're at bed, cars are driving past, all the windows open, just yeah. banging Prodigy yeah, tunes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is in Forest Hill. No, I suddenly started seeing these things on the news of, like, America, yes, please, brother, um, American news headlines, you know, Prodigy from, you know, and, and there was, like, pundits rapping as well and shit like that. I remember there was, like, you know uh, I mean? do, do you ever see where they were doing the weather forecast? Yeah. And, they, and the guy who was doing the weather forecast Crazy. rapped a whole, you know, and it's like, when he was alive, you wouldn't have thought that he touched so many, obviously, like, Mob Deep or whatever, but people weren't celebrating him mm. like that when he was alive, innit? Mm. But you yeah. don't know how many people that you actually, like, connect touched. with until you, until yeah. shit like that happens, innit? But I was like... Rah, you know, I, I, I could have been sitting in this restaurant and and thought, this guy ain't yeah, heard a prodigy. Oh, yeah. My man's come over, he goes, rah, prodigy, I'll, I'll drink one with you. This He was like, yo, this round's on the house. Oh, my God. We're celebrating the, the, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just that's like, the best. Rah, man. That's that hip-hop, those are those hip-hop memories that I think... Here's the prodigy. Yeah, here's the prodigy, man. 100%. And what a lyricist. Like, beautiful. Those hip-hop moments... And I was talking to Tough Tim Twist from the Rocksteady crew about hip hop as an entirety and, and and who it impacts on. And nowadays, it's almost like a given that hip hop is always in society. It's yeah, just a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually takes those sorts of moments of like, yo, to co- remind yourself. Yeah. yeah. Sad as it is. Do you think? Um, do you think we as creatives strive for a legacy beyond our own lives where we don't actually appreciate it because we ain't there to accept it? Oh. Yeah. I mean, everyone's different, so I can only say for for me, but, like, do you know what? So see how you said that? See, like, sometimes when I might be looking for samples or whatever, yeah, and like, I go to Spotify to, to sample. I don't give a fuck in it. I'm like, I ain't a digger or whatever in it. So like, I'll I'll click on someone's like an old artist discography, and you know when they've got like oh, twenty God, yeah. albums, yeah. and I go, yeah, man, I want a bit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some Quincy Jones shit. Yeah, <laughs> just like, bro, there's bare there's bare artists that like you know we ain't even heard of, but yeah. they they've got a discography like. And you're just, you know, because you know what it is. As an artist, you know what it takes to build a discography like that. Yeah. It ain't no play, play shit. No, you no, know what no, I mean? No. Like, you got to be, you know, it's a it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication throughout your whole life to mm. have to, to... And so, yeah, part of, part of... And I think, to me, that's legacy in it. Hands down. Yeah, so, like... And also reminding, like, uh, I heard this CD many moons ago, and I'd be... Damned if I know where I put the thing, because my sound engineer at the time gave it to me back in 2011. But it was a Frank Sinatra album with some girl and a guy from Latin America. And he was on some other shit. Yeah. And I try find it on Discogs, try finding it on Spotify, not there. Can you imagine all the records that went out that yeah. people just don't even put on yeah, Spotify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then can you imagine all the records that got made that didn't even make it to pressing? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Because, like, as artists, you know, look, think about all the, 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 and it's not just music, it's like, you know, graph, whatever. Just think about all the pieces that get unrecognized that people yeah. threw it. Like, you, we only know the ones we know, know about, about yeah. it. You, you know into graph? You like graph? Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, graph, I'm not, I'm not like, you know what? I didn't, wasn't really on all the graph shit, but then when my manager came and uh, when, when I had my last manager for the last two, three years, he was like big in, 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 into graph as well. Like he he writes as well. I don't want to blow up his spot. I don't know if he wants me to in it, but um, but yeah, yeah. He so I I didn't know the the culture behind mm. graph and like he really put me on mm. and it gave me a full on respect for and like I knew bare sick graph guys in it, but you know it's different when someone puts you on to the mm. and like for me some of the risks that fucking writers take and and yeah. it's just like yo that's yeah. and especially because obviously like you know you can monetize graph now and like it's been taken over but like everything does but there's 
there's a thing about graft that will always be underground in it. Mm. And I love that shit. I love that shit. You know what I mean? Because with, with rap music, uh, I'm not sure if there's it really. Cause, yeah, what would be its equivocal? What would be the equivocal of the underground, the underground version of rap in it, in its form? Like, I guess nowadays, actually just freestyling on radio is pretty risky, isn't it? That's like... Bloody hell. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? Wow. That could be like, you know, career suicide if you get it's crazy bars week. That's crazy, isn't it? Bro, do you know, you know what? It's so mad that you say that because I used to go on radio all the time and freestyle. I, I just, but just, just exactly what you're saying. I wouldn't do that now. No. Because it's like... But I'll tell you the reason I wouldn't do that now and I, is because, you know, because people's attention span is so short. Yeah. So if they if this if it's the first time they're seeing seeing me, mm. I don't want them to be the first time they ever seeing me yeah. some subpar freestyle yeah. just because I wanted to have some fun and catch some jokes. I feel like the first time they ever see me has to be like, oh shit, he's nice. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. that's why we won't. Like no one really goes on radio and freestyles anymore. You know what could be really sick is like it's almost like a a USB um, version, something of a subscription. Patron shit where, <laughs> where you get a, your favorite DJ and you literally just bar off, and then people can buy it as on subscription. Yo, that is a great idea, you Come know. on, guy. That is a great idea, you <laughs> Do know. Do you know what I mean? Because people want that, but they don't want it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they want you to prove yourself, but they don't want you to prove yourself publicly. Yeah, it's, it's actually yeah. some pay per view shit. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a bit crazy, man. I love doing the, ra- the, the radio bars and that. I, I know, like a lot of. Um, a lot, of, a lot of rappers don't even want to go on radio and bar now. They just want to do the interview and yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it, isn't it? It's don't like... blame them, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I, th- I, I, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I, I, it's, it's two ways you can do it. Either just go do do the interviews and just like, you know, not do the raps. But then, you know what it is? I love rapping, in mm. it? And I love like... It's a show-off thing, in it? And... Yeah. You feel and, shortchanged all over the place, don't you? Like, yeah, uh, and also, also there's there's not many places where we can go and do that anymore because mm. a show is a show. A show is different, and mm-hmm. there's not many places where you know, like when we was young, we used to just link up and rhyme in it. We don't do that no more. No, no, no. You it's know, really isn't we, that something? It's weird, isn't it? Like we we literally we me and my boys we used to go to the park, play some beats, smoke bud all night and rap, mm. and yeah. it's rap. I don't rap. I don't rap with no one anymore. Like we go to studio and work, but like we don't be sitting around rapping in it. It's troubling, isn't it? It's fucking troubling. Yeah, it's, uh, that I, part I don't of even. The culture's I, gone. Yeah, I don't even know why that is. Yeah, I don't even know why that is. You know. Right. Okay. On that note, then top five uh, MCs for you. Ooh. Yeah. Top five MCs. Uh, okay, I'd have to say Jay Z. Mm. I'd have to say Nas. Mm-hmm. I'd have to say probably Andre 3000. Ooh, good shout. And I think before all them three, and I can't... My, you know what? And people would go, oh, really? You know it's probably my favourite MC? Common. Common. And, I, okay, I'm going to put them in five then. The Common. silence spoke volumes there. I was, I'm not in no disagreement. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Common, Redman... Jay Z, Nas, Andre three thousand. Andre three thousand on the top. No, no. Fifth. Oh, fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Right, let's dissect that. Yeah. Well, when I when I tell people common, they're like, "Oh, really? No, no, I, wouldn't, fuck with that. I wouldn't. Ex- but I wouldn't expect you to say that. Yeah. Because like he's a you know conscious and like you know, but man, like like water for chocolate is probably they're great. It's probably the greats. Possibly my favorite album. Yeah. I'm yeah. up there with you. I agree. Um. Uh, it's it, ha- it holds all the um, con- uh, conscious um, aspects of its time. That album, like you had the Jay Dilla, you had the Q Tip, you had the Kanye, and they almost like all rallied. You know the John yeah. Legends and that, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. era yeah. just came onto yeah. one album. Which is yeah. like, oh, that's fucking sick. Um, let's get into to Jay Z because I find you like Jay Z. I, I do I like Jay Z. Um, Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I, I, it took me a minute there, but I, what am I, I, I was actually thinking to myself, what am I challenged by? Am I challenged by his uh, business acumen? Am I challenged by his one take kind of jump in the studio thing? I was like, actually, no, because 
you know, that's that's just getting the job done, and it works. Yeah. And I've never hear, I've never heard a dud punchline from him ever. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he's always yeah. on point. So if he doesn't have to write, then that's his business. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Do you know what this 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 not having to this whole not having to write thing? I think like a lot of people have it misconstrued about the the notion of not having to write because he's writing, mm. but he's just writing in his head, and then he's building it piece by piece. I don't know if I saw some, I don't know it might, it might be uh, the Black Album documentary or some sort of documentary on him, mm. but it's when he's in the studio with uh, Rick Ross, uh, not Rick Ross, fucking Rick Rubin, Rubin yeah. and. Um, doing the 99 problems oh yeah i saw that too yeah that's hard so like he's in there and he's doing a bunch of punchings because mm. he's writing the next bit and he's just punching in verbally yeah, writing the next bit okay right mm. so it's mm. like okay yeah you ain't got a pen because a lot of people um think not writing means you're not learning no no they think oh you're writing it all in your head and then going in one time and going so it's not always like that, do you know what I mean? I'm sure he's done a bunch of verses like that as mm. well, but, you know, a lot of it is building it while you're doing it, do you mm. know what I mean? And, like, yeah, you're not writing, mm. but... Working with phonetics of the... But, but you're writing in your in your mind yeah. and then, you know, slowly building it bit by bit. So it's all about flow. It's, I guess it's like kind of John Cole train with a sax. It's like you're actually moving with the track yeah. rather than trying to find the punchline that your favourite MC would like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he does that, doesn't he? And I, and then, yeah, I guess that's the ultimate call to freestyling that you're ever going to likely get. Uh, yeah, I, th I think what happens with doing that, like I, I wish I could do something like that, but my, 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 me my memory and my brain is just like I forget, oh, <laughs> I forget, I forget normal shit. So never mind, like, but it's like. No, you said in one of your bars, we raise a toast while you make toast. That shit <laughs> fucking killed me, bro. Like, it still holds weight. Do you know what I mean? I still remember it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, that shit, you, you have to write that stuff. That's just yeah. too gold. Yeah, yeah. And also, do you know what? I think, like, it's almost like been made out, oh, if you write, you're, a, yeah. you're, you're not as good as the people who don't write. I think it's just, you know, there's no formula to none of this, isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you just... Yeah. Because the thing is, like, he don't write now, but I remember reading interviews with him saying, oh, I used to write on napkins and all that. So at mm. one point he did used to write, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it's like, um, I think what one thing that comes with not writing is like you're saying, just the vibe of you, almost you were freestyling, mm. you know what I mean? It comes from an emotion that yeah. that you had to kind of put into words. Because, yeah. you know, like, when, when, I, when I get a new beat, now, now when I get beats... If I get a pack from someone who I'm actually working with, if I'm going through them, if I start, if my mind starts going straight away, rather than move going, okay, I, I want this beat, mm. going to the next one, mm. I'll just start working there and then because there's no there's no vibe that you're going to catch ever again mm. than the first time that you heard it and liked it. A thousand fucking percent, bro. Do you know what I mean? So as soon as I hear it, I'm not I'm not going, yeah. all right, this one's on the list, move on to the next yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. going, all right, cool, let me start yeah, working yeah, yeah, on it yeah, yeah, and just yeah. getting some ideas and yeah. just... Because I'm never going to get that feeling again because yeah. the second time I revisit it, I will have already heard it once. Yeah, it's instantaneous. You know I mean? To so the point like, that why didn't someone put the BPM on the track? Because I'm I'm now having to figure out the fucking all BPM. All you, all you producers need to put the fucking BPMs on the songs, Thank man. You. All Thank of you, you need to put a fucking BPM. Because cause you know what it is? They don't they don't, they don't don't respect the fact that some rappers hear the shit and go, okay, come on record right now. Because yeah. I do that, do you know yeah. what I mean? I'll be in the studio, pull up the thing, oh... I got one for this. Yeah. Let's go right now. Yeah. I don't want to email someone like oh God, <laughs> you, million, your million. face when I said it. Yeah, spoke volumes. It's there, man. That, do your BPMs, yeah, people. Yeah, man. It's yeah, yeah. You know, crazy. There's, um, there's producers and then there's beat makers, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, for real. Um, let's talk about um, nasty Nas because I think he got a bit of a bad rap over a period of time, but. I, I still rated his stuff. Nas is like so, and shit, you know. So when, so on. like, it's 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 a it's a running thing in the studio. Like, a lot of the guys who come to our studio don't like Nas, and every time I'm like, "Yo, Nas is nice." They're like, "Shut up, man, Nas, Nas, Nas." Sonny, you love Nas, it's like, no, nah, I don't love Nas, but yo, you can't like disrespect Nas. Come on, mm -hmm. man. Like, so I I I think you know about your old Droog. No, talk, talk to us. Oh, about you don't me. know about your old Drew? No, 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 elaborate. Dude, please, yeah. Bro, shit. So this guy, shout out to Drew. We've done a bunch of music as well. Like, So this guy, he, 
he sounded he sounded like no, I can't believe you don't know this. No, no, tell me. Shit, so when before he dropped his first record, everyone was going, "Raw, oh, this is Nas." Really? Yeah. What to the point he sounded exactly like? Bro, I feel to just pull it up now and show you. Pull it up now. Pull it, I, up, pull it up right now. Do it right now. That's as loud as my shit will go. So I'll put it in. She knew that I would smash a little Debbie and I still bag the hosts. Don't fuck with Edelman's ghost from the team. Not today. <laughs> that sounded exactly like Nas. Bro, that's what I'm saying, isn't it? Bro, I mean, he's Droog's dope, like. But basically, before he dropped his project, the whole world was going, "Yo, this is Nas, this is Nas, this is Nas," and obviously he, he, he you know, he, but he didn't say no, it's not Nas either. He just dropped his project and let everyone think what they thought, and then I think he ended up doing a show at um, somewhere in New York, and uh, obviously he had he was mm. him, innit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's dope in his own right, and now he's like, you know, he's part of Bear Project. What did he look like? Was he like scrawny white guy or something? No, nah, I think he's I think he's Ukrainian or Russian or something like that. Fantastic. But I think he's from he's somewhere somewhere in New York. Like he's super dope in his own right, mm. but the whole the whole world like he had a bunch of people thinking like, yo, this is it's the future the point, coming to, to, to this to the point where. To the point where I think Nas was on MTV and they started asking Nas about his secret album. And Nas was like, what secret album? That's and he's like, oh, fantastic. you know, your, your old Droog, the, the the moniker that you've used for like... He was like, I don't I don't know. Do you know what I mean? That's so, the best PR campaign you could probably create for two people. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I thought it was Nas. I thought it was Nas because I was like, there ain't no one who ain't got a back catalogue who is this nice. Mm. Because he's nice like Nas, mm -hmm. like, you know what the I mean? The flow, the flow alone is just yeah, like the yeah. way that he, that, that cadence. Bro, you're, 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 you're I'll, I'll put you on some shit, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm clearly late to the party on that one. I'm, I, I'm surprised mad. you haven't heard of him, but yeah, in the studio, like, they're, they're, like they're, them boys are big Droog fans, in it? So they were like, oh, but like Nas, for me, he's done, I mean, the thing is, he's, even when, I mean, he's doing these albums with Hit Boy and like, the beat still ain't hitting. I don't know why Nas is such a bad beat picker, mm. but you know, I, I think he's one of the best, man. Like you know, some of the songs that some of the songs yeah. that he's, you know, yeah. Do you think? Do you think some of it is creating conversation? Because one thing Nas did say was like, it doesn't matter if I'm talked badly or talked nicely. At least I'm being talked. So maybe there is that kind of good cop, bad cop in a Simon Cowell kind of way that. I don't know, man. I mean, why would you want someone to talk bad about you? Because it adds it adds gravitas to two uh, two different worlds of people, doesn't it? In what sense? Well, because if people if people aren't going to like you anyway, they'll be the quickest people to forget about you until you do something that grates them, and then 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 they Ooh, start talking. Fuck. The you know, then they start talking <laughs> to the people that like you, and then that creates that steam. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I mean. In all honesty, no, I don't think he is. I just you think don't. he's a. I just think he's a bad beat picker. I just think he picks bad beats, man. I don't. I really don't get it. I think he's so dope, but like, mm. yeah, I. I just. I, I. don't really listen to no Nas albums, yeah, but like you. some. Like he done a. He done a song called Echo with Swiss Beats. I don't know, three four years mm. ago, maybe longer. Like, that's one of my favorite favorite joints out there. Mm. So you know, like, he's still got shit, but. Yeah, I feel you. You know, you know who you know who gets slept on that I fucking rate. Go on, Buster Rhymes. Interesting. So I was thinking this to myself the other day. So Buster Rhymes, obviously Buster Rhymes, is a fucking legend, isn't it? Um, I feel that. I feel that sometimes you know, like when I think like crazy flows end up taking a hit on content. Mm. You know what I mean? Who's doing like mad flows? They got sick content as well. It's Buster, far between, and you can't yeah. always get the, the yeah. balance. Is hard. Yeah, the only one that does it is Faro. Yo, shout out to Faro. He <laughs> just, you know, Faro. I'm a big Faro fan. He just commented in one of my, on my on my video yesterday. I got gassed. So yeah, shout out to Faro. Faro Munch. Yeah, All yeah, day. and you're right. Far but also, Faro don't really go into the double time realm in it. No, he doesn't. Buster fully flexes mm -hmm. in that realm, and like I, I find that, you know, when when. When you go, I mean, did you like his last album? Yeah, I yeah, did. yeah, I did. I rated it. Yeah, but then even then, the, the rating it based on did I listen to it more than three times? Yes, I did. Do you know what I mean? That's it, so crazy. That's how you. That's how you'd put. Yeah, I mean, 
I t- you know, uh, that, that is it, Extinction Level of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I love that. Yeah, that's a great album. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. That album. That's a great album. And like, there's a D- the DJ mm. Scratch beats on there. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yo, he's a legend, isn't it? Yeah, big old buster. And it's beautiful time. to see that, like, look how long he's... Like, his, his discography is crazy. Mm-hmm. He's got joints and also, Bonkers. like, you know, the range and everything, yeah. Mariah Carey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Janet. Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> just... Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't you just wish you were there in the late uh. 90s just being <laughs> all silver-suited and... <laughs> Winning, yeah, <laughs> silver suit in a winning, yeah, for uh, real. yeah. Uh, Black Thought, another one. Black Thought is one of the illest. Mm. Oh, do you know what? Nah, he's got to be in my top five, man. I, you know what? Some, you know, I said this to a few people like a few years back. I was like, and I only said it because I saw someone else say it, and like, I don't want to get black thoughted in the sense of. He's one of the best ever. Like when Black Thought rhymes, you'd think, oh, but you know what? He doesn't. Co- oh, I didn't even put Prodigy in my top five. No, you're all right. You're all right. This is this was purely on, off the man. cuff, people. Can, Damn. We can extend it to 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a podcast. So, 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 so Black Thought, Prodigy, like, I feel like Black Thought doesn't get put in enough top fives no, or enough no, top no. tens. But the thing is, when you hear Black Thought rap, you go, he is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoever's the best. He's also the best. But you think, I, I think I know why that is. I think a lot of it is because he was sidelined again, just like Prodigy is, to the concept of the band or the duo, the formation. Fair. You know what I mean? Fair. It's, 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 it's a bit of a trait that Fair. P- people, I mean, they don't want to come out yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, but Black Thought kills it. Yeah. I want to, uh, yeah. Yeah. At some point, I want to I, I catch a body with Black Thought, man. Mm. We're gonna do it somehow. I've, I, I, I was Purus was telling me I should have got him on my Kev Brown album, but we we had to hand it in, and we just didn't have enough enough time in the end, and I didn't 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 make it happen. But at some point, I so wanna, you putting uh, out into the ether like that, you know, like yeah, you know, we're doing it. Is it. What's the process of reaching out to these people? Is it literally just like a straight heads up based on your catalog? Um, I mean, I try, I I, I try and do it where you know what it is, bro. Like we were talking off camera earlier. You be in the game for twenty years. Mm-hmm. You just end up knowing everyone, and if you don't know them, you know someone who knows them. Mm. Three degrees of separation. Yeah, almost. man. And and like for me at this point, it really is like that. I can I, I know someone who I know someone who can get anyone. So it's just like I try and get an in like mm. that. And if it's not an in like that, you know, you just hit them up. And like luckily now, you know, you know what it is. The first thing they do is go to your Spotify, or whatever, mm-hmm. and they see it's doing all right. Yeah. And like you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's all up there, you know. Yeah, yeah, so it's just you know, um, yeah. Luckily, it's been it's been, and also just they see you working with these legends, and they yeah. like you know you know. Yeah. It sells itself. Yeah, and luckily, like my business is clean. I and like I, my I ain't got no no blotches on my name mm. in it. I tried to keep everything. Like above board and transparent. It's getting harder it's, to do these days with the world being the way it is, right? Yeah. So just like you know, um, people pe- people do people do their research before they they decide to fuck with you, innit? Mm. And they'll ask someone else. If someone tries to do something with me, and you know, I'll go, "Yo, is this guy?" You know, I like, I, "Yo, is this guy cool?" Yeah. And yeah. Go, "Yo, he's cool." You know what I mean? Which, it's, like, it's about this point is well, big shout out, Pav, foreign beggars, Pav. Um, for that's to connect because you know, bro, you know, recommendation, you, bro, 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 you know, you know what, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be 100 with you. So when, when I was, when I, I Pav, my phone was fucked when I was leaving, so Pav called me to Uber, yeah, he called me to Uber, and I was like, what's this killer, killer like, guy like, he's safe, yeah, and he's like, yo, safe guy, he's like one of us. I was like, ah, right, cool, I'm gonna enjoy this, I'm gonna enjoy this, like, he's a safe <laughs> yo, guy, yeah, big up, Pav, yeah, yo. straight up, and then he goes, tell, tell Car, I said, hi, I said, yo, we're gonna, I said, yo, there's probably gonna be a section where we talk about yeah, you, yeah. so don't worry, we have to get into it because if I'm really real with you, like foreign beggars to me, they, they've left a huge fucking hole in the scene, just where they did, they departed. Um, rest in peace. No, rest of in peace, yes, Ebo. Yeah, right. man. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like there's there's an, there's still that space for um, foreign beggars in some capacity. You know, it, it's hard because it, without Ebo, it'd be. It, it, but as a institution, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, bro, like 
you know, one thing about them, yeah, and you know, the, the way the way Pav did things like back then and and even now, he put on a whole host of people and a whole like people would have no idea what yeah. levels he. And even now to this day, yeah, he. Like us, like he's just like, yeah, go, well, go, ha- go, go. Ha- having him around me now, yeah, like he's been with me for the last three, four months, just like work, working with me closely, just like doing some like managerial type stuff for me. And just having him around me, bro, is just like, he's on 24 7 mm-hmm. opportunity, opportunity. And just like me, I'll be like, oh, okay, you know, I'll hit them tomorrow or whatever. No, I'll hit them now, let's go now, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? And just, just that, the whole. You know, he's kind of like been a been a mentor to me, innit? Do you know what I mean? That. He they like Dented put out my second record ever. Wow, fuck. My second record ever. They put it out. I was going to the studio when they had the studio in Whitechapel. Yeah, yeah. Sleep it sleeping they put on, on a the, bunch of people. I was as well. sleeping on the floor in the booth, staying there for three, four days straight. He'd give me the key to the studio and go, just go do your thing, whatever. Do you know what I mean? He didn't even know me like that, but he was like, Yo, I'll fuck with you. And I and at the, bro at the time I was like you know what at the time I was like shit I know foreign beggars I've made it mm-hmm. it's twenty years ago I was, I was like yo I've I've made it you know what I mean? they've, and, they they've they've left a dent and the beautiful the thing scene, is that we're all, like he's still here with me and like yeah. you know and even like no names no names good friend of mine Big you know we no still yeah yeah, yeah shout, shout out DJ yo, no names and, and also Illa Man yeah like, all of them all, all the extended yeah. family like, even all the extended fam they're all killing it it's yeah. beautiful to see they're all out here doing still bits. on it yeah man. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like, and not not, not even that um, it's to fill the hole that the beggars left that you're saying, but so because Pat's been with me for a minute, like, we ended up making an album together. Nice. So we got, we got like, an album, but because he's been doing all that stuff in India, you mm. know, with a, the, yeah, yeah. The, we're going to go and put out in India on a dope label out there. We just spoke to him a couple of days ago and just finalised the deal. Fucking so sick. we're going out to India in November... And uh, and we're we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go fuck it up, man. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's straight. Ex- <laughs> Bro, I ain't even I haven't even been out to because you know that's that's where my family are originally from. I ain't even been out there for yeah, like but... twenty years. I went there when I was maybe even longer than twenty years. I went there when I was a youth man, and I was like with my parents, so I don't remember it really like that. So it's gonna be a shock for me, isn't it? <laughs> it's incredible. I went out there the month before lockdown. Oh, okay. That sick. shit was for the first time ever. Yeah. Blue. To, to do some music shit or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tech Fest. Right, right, which right. Which is a big old event. Dude, the, lawless ain't a word. They had like, you know, electronics next to fireworks. <laughs> they ain't give a fuck. But the whole thing was just on edge the whole time. It was like a mad festival. The kids out there are not, You're going to have the best time, bro. That's fucking... You know, bro, you know what's crazy? So, all the beats on that one project. And the reason, sorry, the reason I brought this up was because of the foreign beggars thing. Like a few of the, few of the joints on there, sound like, like it could be off Asylum speakers. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's a few joints where I was like, this is like that beggars vibe. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And what's crazy is, the kid that there's one producer produced the whole thing. He's like 19 years old. He's from a little bro. He's from a little village in. India, do you know what's mad? Check this, it's serendipity, from the same village that my mom's from. Oi, really? And, and, and you know, look nah, how big you India couldn't is. write that. That's some... and the kid's only like I think nineteen, twenty, and like. And the beautiful thing about him is like, he's sampling shit that you know we might have heard sampled before, but he don't even know it's been sampled because he's only nineteen, so he ain't even heard those songs. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah, like yeah. his ear is plugged into the you know what. Yeah. What the six samples are, or whatever, yeah, yeah. but he ain't going, Oh, that's been something I'm gonna take that and flip it. My... He just ain't even heard those songs. Never underestimate the youths, man. Like, they are on some other thing, especially like with beatboxing, with graffiti, with all this stuff. Like, they just they take the innocence with something where yeah. we may have just yeah, been yeah, like yeah. a bit more protective. Yeah. Yeah, We've yeah, been yeah, like, yeah. No, no, that's don't touch that sample, yeah, yeah. that's gonna cost you a couple yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bro, he don't even know, he don't know, and that's the most beautiful thing about it. Like, yeah. he's yeah. And bro, I'll, I'll play you some shit. Yeah, yes, this, please. This guy, I swear down, and I don't even say this lightly. I, people come to the studio, and I'll play them some shit. I'm like, he's like m- madly levels. Whoa. He's just ridiculous. He's, I wouldn't say that lightly. He's ridiculous. If someone played me all his packs and went, oh yeah, madly made these, I'd be like, all right, cool, yeah, I believe it. In fact, I'd done a song with him recently. 
I sent it to all my boys on WhatsApp. I was like, oh, yeah, new Madlib joint. <laughs> really? You know we got Madlib on the album. Nah, mate. Not today. No, no, we got Madlib on yeah. Really? <laughs> that was my segue. <laughs> no, nah, it weren't really. Yo, but no, for real, we got, me, we, we, got, we got Madlib on the album. Really? Bro, check this, yeah. Give me some, hold on, wait. Give me some lists. Who's on the album? Give me the A to Z of who's on the album. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So we got... we got um, Primo, Madlib. Primo, Madlib. Doom, JLEC, and then we got um, Lee Scott and Milcavelli from Colt Mountain. Mm. Um, Milcavelli's sick. Yeah, yo, yo, he, yeah. I mean, they're, yo, both of them are just crazy, you know, like, mm. it was like, if we was going to get anyone from the UK, it was them, innit? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, they, they, they kind of, it's just a different kind of scene. Yeah. It's a different kind yeah. of thing. It, yeah. But, you know, like, when it comes to, like, the rhymes and shit, mm. like, they're they're mm. they're all super nice, nice. Mm. You know what they're like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Birmingham holds man. a Birmingham holds quite a alternative scene. Like you know that kind of Scar Lord esque. You know, obviously the Black Country Birmingham. Yeah, they all yeah, have yeah. this kind of heavy metal rock influence and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I kind of fuck with that. I just well, love that. You know, there's a there's a cat called Robert, who we just put out. Me and Purist produced his album. He's my boy, and he's from Black Country, mm. and he's proper got the Black Country accent. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we just put his album out, and he's like, this is his first album as Robert, and he's like, he just come out of pen like last year. There's my good brethren in it, and when he come out, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to put him on in it. Mm. And he didn't, he weren't even on music. He was like, yo, I just come out, I want to like, you know, his personal train, I just want to mm. you know, do that. And I was like, bro, on some group home shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to put him on, man? But, but, but I was like, yo, let me, let just let me, yeah, just yeah, let me yeah. do this one record for you, you know. And then Purist heard it, bro. We ended up like so. This guy he's had no records out before, as far as like Robert is concerned. Mm -hmm. We got Cool Keith on his album. We got Rag and Bone Man on his album. We got Slug from Atmosphere on his album. What? And he's rapping in a Black Country accent. We got Bear on like we got Sleaford Mods on there, and he's oh. and, and, and he's rapping in a Black Country accent fully. Unless you you, you guys do get the idea that. You're on some shit right now, bro. Like, <laughs> this guy's like a turning machine of content, hit making, <laughs> you know, like, you know, you get those kind of, I don't know, Warhammer style lead figures that have bro, just got but loads like of guns. I was saying, I feel like we're just getting started. started. We're just getting started because once, you know, once I get my foot in the door, like, all this has been, mm. you know, we're doing it, we're doing it. But once, like, people really know what's up. Mm. Then you know. Do you try and hold certain? Um, do you have a vision for each song where you're like, all right, so this is definitely set aside for this. I haven't got him yet, but this is my plan. I want to. Um, or is it not that deep? You just kind of go with the flow. You know what? I usually, I usually, when when I've when I've got the song, I might go, oh, the, it, it's go with the flow. But sometimes, like a beat might come up, and it'll be like, oh, do you know what? This is a no-brainer. This person yeah. will sound great on this. Do you know what I mean? Like before the producer even knows about it, you're like, I've got a forecast for this. I know where it's going. Yeah. See, and that's the that's an A and R job, really. That's A and R. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, do you know what? On all my projects, even if like even like you know the Buckwall type joints and all that, I put on all of them executive produced by me. Yeah, you should because yeah. like yeah. they were. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you take it for granted because you're so busy doing it. You're not thinking about what the role is. You're just trying to make the best you can do. And I know what you mean. It's it's a very you have to. You've got to, you know, you've got to own your position, even though you don't feel like you are it. Well, well, do you know what? On my earlier projects, I wasn't I wasn't putting that at all. Mm. And on a lot of them, especially when I was getting beats from loads of different people and then making projects out of them, um, it was like I'm the one who's making this whole project i'm the one who's um making sure it gets from start to finish and putting it out do you mm. know what i mean and mm. essentially that's what a producer's role is yeah. to oversee yeah. the, the whole the whole thing do you know what i mean yeah. but a lot of producers and especially like you know especially if you're doing it overseas or whatever they're sending the beats in it they're sending yeah, yeah. the beats and like you know that's what america the american industry do like one thing that i've, I've definitely noticed with um with this, the, the new league of rappers, especially over here, is the, um, and I say cookie cutter again affectionately, but the, the, there is almost like a, um, I guess Griselda play a part in this, this, this era of shotting the, the, the music, getting the music out there yeah. by any means and yeah. treating it like the, like a, um, like industri as industriously as possible. Yeah. 
like a drug dealer would. Or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there is that culture for it now where beforehand, I don't know, a lot of the mumble rap stuff, it, it's been argued that they're, they're, the, they're the drug addicts yeah. to, to the 50 cents <laughs> yeah, of the world. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> so if you can override that and you're suddenly the drug dealer, you're shot in music in the yeah. same way. I mean, part of the reason i got all these albums that I'm sitting on now is because once I, I saw... Um, oh, shit, I can just um, make an album, sell it on vinyl and get this much money and, well, if I can do one, yeah. I best go in there fast and do another 20. Yeah. And then I'll, do you know what I mean? So shop, that, shop, that, shop, shop. that was really where it came from. But then also, like, in that in that vein, you don't want to lose the artistry in it. Like, I know, like, it's, you know, it's a kind of a trend for people to go, oh, you know, shout out to Westside Gun, mm-hmm. but like he, you know, he he he'll do like he'll go. Oh, I made this album in a weekend. Yeah, I don't. Like I made that. this album in a week. I'm not about that. I don't know where off what. Okay, so tell me why why what you th- you think that you're just losing. It's bravado. I think it's. Or do, you, think... or do do you think they're really made in a week? Or do you... I believe it probably is. Okay, but um, you know, like it's like. Going to see an amazing graffiti piece that you walk down a road every day and see, and you're like, all of a, you walk down the same road every week, and all of a sudden you see this amazing graffiti piece, and you're like, F- where did that come from? But you see the spray cans on the side of the road. It's like I don't want to see the spray cans on the side of the road. <laughs> okay. See what I'm saying? So, so like, you you don't want to show them what's behind the curtain. Yeah, really. yeah that's yeah, the yeah. only thing for me. I like, I, I appreciate that you know people can make their songs so quick, but I'm not sure if it's like a. Uh, um, a passage to rights, you know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely shouldn't be. Mm. Um, yeah, it's 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 a weird one because like it's a it's a good brag. Oh, I made this in a weekend, yeah. but then also I think if you do make it in a weekend, like on, honestly, like I could make an album in a week. I could make an album in a week, but I don't think it would be as good as the album I made in a three months or eight years and yeah and oh but the, i mean then so i was I, I was watching a thing with pusha t the other day and they were saying oh you know you only bring out an album mm. once every i don't know three years or something like that and he was going well you know good art takes time mm. but then where is the you know once every three years in the climate we're in ain't enough content these days they call it content. yeah so it where hurts. where where do you draw the line and at what speed and at yeah. what and at what quality as well yeah. do you know what i mean like the irony is that NFTs are being pushed as bespoke art, but the real art is being pushed as content. That's fucked up. Wow. Ain't it? Wow. The real art is being... Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. We've been bullied into, like, going in Yo, this direction. We have, you know. We, we, yeah. Do you know what? The smaller artists like this has been, been buoyed off into having to do, yeah. you know, and even just, like, when, when, we, when we're doing shit with, you know, um, you know, just rollouts and, like pitching songs and like having to do this amount of singles mm. because it'll have this amount of views when the album drops and all this mm. like all these things that I'm having to like think about now I didn't get into the business for this just wanted to bar just wanted off to rap in it just wanted, like, just wanted to turn up and bar yeah do you know <laughs> what I mean and so it's just like but the thing is that you get sucked in like even it, I, I know the perils of like watching views and likes and all that mm. shit and I don't really give a shit. But then when something drops, guess what? I'm watching. I'm watching. <laughs> yeah. Once it's dropped and it's done, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't go back and look and see. But but when it drops, like shit's precious. Yeah, it suddenly means something. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's it's. I think for the artist, it's a bit of a quandary to be in. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. just like you don't want to give a fuck, but then you give a fuck in it. Quandaries of being an artist, man. And if you're out there listening, you know you've you've had a real insight here to my guy. Um, I, I'd like to say what the future was because you know, I'll ask you what the future was, but it's pretty much mapped out. It's insane the levels of. I appreciate that, bro. I mean, do you know what? For the first time ever, it's kind of been mapped out. We were talking about Pav when he was. We, I just got some new management. Shout out to Fallacy. Shout out to Strategy. Um, they're taking on some bits, for you, you know, so like, yeah. Oh, you talking about fallacy? Fallacy, fallacy, right? fallacy, yeah. Big old fouls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Big fouls in the yeah, building. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, we just like locked in like a couple of weeks ago. So Fantastic. they're... Fantastic. One of the nicest humans as well. Yeah, man. Safe guys, man. So like, they're, they're, they're on board now. And like, we mapped out like the, the next three years, or like, sorry, the next like year and a half mm. for what we're doing, 18 months. And there's like, 
shit, man. I ain't ever mapped out the next month. <laughs> but now I've got these people around me and everyone's like, mm-hmm. you know, taking care of man's situation and we're doing this, this and this. You know, and you can you can see the future. Mm. For me, it's quite liberating knowing, yeah. shit, man, I know that this is going to gonna go... Because... Pl- Cause these albums are finished, like you know, I got, mm. I got, I got albums stacked and shit's finished. Mm. It's not like, oh, is this gonna happen? Are we gonna get this? Shit's done. But what to do with it? That's the thing. It's a, it must be quite overwhelming, you know. Um, you know what? Up until this point, it was overwhelming because it was like, what to do with them and make sure you get it right. But I didn't have the infrastructure. Mm. But now that I got everyone playing a certain role and I've like got all the boxes ticked and I, you know I've, I was going to say I've been c- kind of lucky in this sense I have been kind of lucky but also it's taken me 20 years to fucking get it so it's not mm. just luck but i got everyone that I need riding with me well, i got a man from 20 years ago who was still with still me still bowling yeah. i got new guys with me who have like locked in and I can't really see you know like I can't really see the shit going wrong in it like we got we got the shit there. It's a yeah, it's a liberating feeling, man. I never really had the 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 chance to be, you know, in a position I am. So yeah, I guess I, I feel lucky, you know. But we good to go in it. With age comes wisdom, and it's a fucking pleasure that I'm part of this journey, yeah. brother. Thank you so much for many more, man. You. Yeah, man. We just getting started. Well, there you go. Killer Keller podcast. Out like it was out of fashion, all right? Ah. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend and don't speak to anyone I wouldn't. Tell a friend, all right? Big Peace. Up. Sunny Jim. Bless, bro. Peace.